rely on that thick and lush forest for survival. So we just ask that you're using your paper products responsibly by reducing, reusing, and recycling all paper waste and products. We want to help keep those animals' homes alive and thriving for years and years to come. Now friends, we've made our way over to Salty River. Animals out here hang out in the water and around the water. And up ahead, I'm seeing some white and gray birds with a really long beak. These are going to be the pink-backed pelicans. Now they do get their name because during mating season, they have a pink spot that shows up on their back. It's almost like they're blushing. Now their pink spot is not actually their feathers that are turning pink, but it's going to be the skin that's underneath their feathers. Now we're going to be keeping an eye out in the waters on this left side. We're looking around for some hippos. Now since it is a little bit of a cooler day outside, the hippos might be up on the banks. So keep an eye out on the banks as well. Now the reason we're looking in the water is because that's where hippos will typically spend the majority of their day fully submerged. Now they won't actually swim in this water to get around. Their preferred method of travel is to sink all the way down to the bottom and run or walk across the floor. Now they can do this because hippos will actually hold their breath for up to eight minutes while they are fully submerged in that water. I do see some of those hippos over here, a couple on the banks or some in the water. We do want to make sure we're remaining fully seated, my friends. Now this next animal over here is also on the left side. This is the Nile crocodile. Now on average, this crocodile, oops, stay seated for me. On average, this crocodile will be around 16 feet in length, and typically they weigh close to 500 pounds. Who are the primary breeders for the group? 
Now these dogs will be one of the most successful predators in Africa, and it's because they work together as a team to chase down their prey until it falls over from exhaustion. Now on the left at the top of the hill back there, we're gonna see a brown animal. That is gonna be the sable antelope. Sable antelope will live 17 to 18 years out in the wild, and they are super territorial. In the instance of choosing between fight or flight, they're definitely gonna choose to fight. And if they find themselves in a sparring match, they lay down on their front two legs to show off their horns to that other animal. Now there is also an alpha male and female with those antelope. The male does make the majority of the decisions, but it's actually the female who determines the movement of the group. The male just doesn't actually realize that. Now we are a little bit closer to those Maasai giraffes up here, so let's talk about them. Now Maasai giraffes, they do have very jagged spots. And each body pattern is going to be unique to each giraffe. Kind of like our fingerprints are as humans, and just like that zebra striping pattern. Now these giraffes do spend 16 to 20 hours out of their day eating, and their tongues are a bluish gray color, and they're covered in a thick mucus. It'll act as a sunscreen for them. Now since they do spend most of their day eating, they really don't sleep a whole lot. Only about 30 minutes, and it's not actually consecutive. We'll see them taking two to three minute naps here and there. And typically while they're napping, they're going to be standing up. We won't see them laying down too often. The animals on the right with those thick horns, these are the Angoli cattle, also known as Watusi cattle, after the Watusi people who first domesticated them. Those horns will grow to about three to four feet in length, and although they look heavy, they're lightweight. They're made up of a honeycomb-like structure on the inside. If blood circulates and flows through their horns, that helps to keep them cool. Now, there are two more animals on this hill over here. The gray ones at the top are wildebeest, and those little tiny ones with that white underbelly, those are springbok. The springboks are my favorite, so I'm gonna start with them. Now, springboks are tiny, but they are mighty. They stand two and a half to three feet tall, and when frightened, they can spring up to six feet in the air repeatedly. Now, they will be one of the fastest antelopes running speeds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. And while they're running or walking, they can spring 13 feet forward through the air. And that springing motion that they make is called pronging. Oh, I found another animal. Look at that. That's an eland over there. Now, both the male and female elands have horns, but the females are a lot skinnier and more spiraled. Their bodies are very large, but they're mainly made up of muscle. Because of this, they can leap up to eight feet in the air from a standing position. Those wildebeest are right there once again. They do live in densely packed herds. Those herds are anywhere from 10 to 1,000 of them. And once a year, they'll migrate distances of 500 to 1,000 miles. That's 1.5 million wildebeest migrating that far. And we can actually track their migration pattern from outer space. Now I see an elephant over here on the right side. This is an African elephant. The way we can tell them it's an African elephant is by taking a look at its ear shape. The ear is kind of in the shape of Africa. Now elephants, they are going to live in a matriarchal society, so most herds that we see are going to be females and their calves. Now when male elephants reach around 10 to 14 years old, they go off on their own. They are some pretty solitary animals, but we will sometimes see them forming bachelor groups. However, they're not really too loyal to these groups. If they're just not feeling it anymore, they're going back off on their own again. They're completely fine with that. So seeing that there was just one elephant hanging out over there, we can kind of assume that it's going to be an adult male. I love elephants, so I like to tell a little story about how the Disney Conservation Fund and other organizations are trying to help protect these elephants. It's called the Elephant Band Bees Project. So through research with elephants, we have learned that they are afraid of bees. Now it's not the bee sting that they're afraid of, it's actually the sound. Elephants have amazing hearing. So if they are hearing bees within the area, they are going to let out a low call to all of the other elephants saying, stay away, do not come near, there are some bees right over here. Now with this knowledge, we have helped farmers in Africa build beehives on their fences. This is going to help protect their crops because elephants won't come walking over there thinking they see an all-you-can-eat buffet. They're going to leave the farmer's land alone because they won't be nearby. And not only is it helping to protect the farmer's land, it's also helping to protect these elephants. 
Now elephants, they are poached for their tusks that are made of ivory, so we truly do not want to see them around too many people. Those people could spread the whereabouts of these elephants, and the wrong people could overhear it, could put these elephants in danger. So these beehives, they are keeping the people where the people need to be, and those elephants right where they need to be, which is very far apart from one another. Now those farmers, they do also get another source of income from these beehives, because they get to sell the honey. So overall, it's just a big win-win for the farmers and the elephants. Now we did see that elephant. It was showing off its muscular trunk over there. It was holding all of that hay and grass. Elephants do have 40,000 muscles in their trunk with two finger-like projections at the end. That's what allowed that one to grab that hay and lift it over to that new spot. Now they also will use that muscular trunk to grab mud and fling it in the air to get it to coat their back. It's nature, guys. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, you do it too. <laughs> Now the next animal we're going to see over here on the left side, this is the greater flamingo. Now when these flamingo hatch, they are going to be a soft gray color, and it takes about two to three years of them eating their diet of brown shrimp, which is high in beta carotene, for them to get to their pinkest pink color. Now these flamingo, they will be the lightest pink of the flamingo species, and also the largest flamingo of the flamingo species. mud wallow over here so now we are looking around for some animals that roll around in mud lots of animals are going to use mud as that natural sunscreen and insect repellent we saw one of those elephants back there throwing mud on its back with its muscular trunk that's how they are going to get the mud on their body but some animals just roll around in it so we're going to see if we can find that animal around here Oh, there is that animal over there on the right side. That is a white rhino. Now, white rhinos actually get their name from the Afrikaans word fight, which means wide and not white. It's referring to their broad, square mouth. Now, the white rhinos are also quite large. They're going to weigh anywhere between four and 5,000 pounds, and they'll charge up to speeds of 35 miles per hour. Now, typically, we will see those white rhinos hanging out together or in groups, and it's because they're very social animals. They like hanging out all together. And their number one way of socializing is actually by rolling around in that mud wallow all together. Now, keep your eyes on the left. I do see some cheetahs over there. Oh. Oh. There they are. Now, cheetahs are fast animals. They can run from zero to 60 miles per hour. And they can reach that speed in just three seconds. It's going to last them a few hundred yards. So you can definitely say that they're sprinters, not really marathon runners. Now they are also unlike a lot of other predators in Africa in the sense that they are daytime hunters. These cheetah will have a black stripe on their face that starts near their tear duct and it goes all the way down to their mouth. And that black stripe will actually help to reflect the sun for them. Kind of like a built-in pair of sunglasses, or if you enjoy watching football or baseball, like the eye black players where it's all doing the same thing, it's just going to reduce the glare of the sun, which really is going to help those cheetah while they hunt. I do see a couple more of those white rhinos up ahead. They are going to be a little bit closer. They're going to be laying on top of the hill. Now let's see what other animals we can find out here. Warthogs over here on the left side. 
Now, warthogs, they are going to be the largest burrowing mammal, but we won't typically see them digging their own burrows from scratch. They are going to find old aardvark burrows and natural burrows in the ground and use their super sharp tusk as well as their snout and their feet to dig those burrows just a little bit deeper just to make them their own home. Now, warthogs also do have two sets of tusks. They have two tusks at the top and two at the bottom. Now, those top tusks, they are mainly for digging those burrows, and those bottom ones are for self-defense because they are razor sharp. Now, the way that warthogs do like to defend themselves is actually by backing themselves up into those burrows and having those long tusks sticking out. Now, in their adulthood, they can actually get close to two feet in length, so pretty intimidating. Now we are heading over to Magadi Glen, and this is going to be home to the Warden's Post. And I do want you guys to think all the way back to that story I was telling you earlier about elephants and bees, because the Warden is actually building a beehive right out front. It's going to be this yellow structure that we'll see. Now I also think that the Warden has the most adorable livestock. We're going to see the Nigerian dwarf goat hanging out out front. Now, although these goats are small, most of them are going to be adults. Now, they do make great livestock for the farmer because of their size. They really aren't taking up a whole lot of space, but also because they are going to eat a lot of things other livestock won't and won't be able to. This is because they are ruminants. That means their stomach has four separate compartments in it. It's really going to help with their digestion, and it's also kind of what gives them their pot belly like shape. Now they do spend most of their day resting and eating. Those goats are very playful and social. They love running around all together and they enjoy meeting all of you. Which is why you all have the opportunity to get up close and personal with those goats as well as some other livestock over at Rafiki Planet Watch in the affection section. And not only can you just pet some animals over there, there are reptiles and insects for you to view. The animal hospital will also be out that way. You never know what you're going to see. Every day there is something new going on. There's also an animation experience for one of Disney's animators to teach you how to draw one of your favorite Disney animal characters. You can also learn more ways about conservation. How the Disney Conservation Fund is trying to help save animals like this out in the wild every day. Now the last train to take you over to Rafiki's Planet Watch will depart at 4.30 today. So if you're wanting to head out that way, I do recommend you go sooner rather than later. You do not want to miss out on all of that fun over there. Now friends, we are just going to be making our way to that last and final stop. Now would be a good time to take a look around. Make sure all of you have all of your belongings. It's a very long journey back to Africa. Please don't leave anything out here with me. And if I do have any wilderness explorers on board, you have been riding on the Simba 1. That is the S-I-M-B-A with the number one right after it. That explorer will be near the exit. They have an orange satchel with them. Got a picture of that safari badge on it. So you'll have that code word. Tell them something that you learned about the animal today. And they will be able to give you your badge. Now I just have this one truck in front of us that needs to keep on moving forward. Then we'll make our way to that stop. And while you are out here in Africa, there's a trail a little bit past our exit. You're going to head up a hill, and if you turn right, you can enter into the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's about a 15 to 20 minute self-paced trail, and out there you can see some of the same animals we got to see, like the okapi and an underwater view of those hippos. There are also meerkats over there, naked walrats, lots of really awesome animals for you to go on out there and see, so I highly recommend doing it. It's about 15 to 20 minutes, and it's stroller, wheelchair, and easy be accessible so don't forget to pick those up on your way out and my friends i'd like to say asante sana thank you so much for joining me i hope you guys had just as much fun as i did out there today and hopefully you got to learn something new about an animal or maybe learn about an animal you've never seen before now once again friends my name was lauren i come to you guys all the way from illinois and i do not like to say goodbye so instead i'll leave you with Bombarini which means to go well. So go well, my friends. Go wild out there. And most importantly, go make a difference. Now, if you're seated on the right, watch those hands, arms, feet, and legs. Doors are sliding open. Asante, Sana, friends. Have a great day. Stay hydrated. Go see some more animals. Have so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. So what do we do? Wait, is
Is that it? That's yeah. Oh, okay. I, I guess so. Okay. 